Hello everyone, my name is Dina Sabi, and on behalf of my co-authors at the University of Toronto and Cornell University, I'll be presenting our paper, Memory Through Design, Supporting Culture Identity for Immigrants Through a Paper-Based Home Drafting Tool. Over the past few years, we've had a great work that has been done in HCI with immigrants that covers various topics to understand the challenges they face in their resettlement countries and design computational supports accordingly. Unfortunately, most of the current work in this field focuses on newcomers' practical needs, in other words, how to provide immigrants with access to information and services for daily activities, while the emotional, social, and cultural needs of migrants, which has an enormous effect on the life experience of both the migrants themselves and the hosting communities, remain unaddressed. An important container of someone's cultural identity is the domestic spaces they occupy. Houses are studied in HCI through the concept of placemaking, so reinventing spaces to create new realities. However, a sense of place within domestic settings is inherently complex because place is not only a lived reality in its physical sense, but also of faces, inhabitants' own experiences, and hopes. In other words, a house becomes a place when it is made from memories, values, and emotions. As such, we need to have a deeper understanding of how memory advises placemaking. And to do so, we turn to Halbach's work on collective memory, which is defined as reminiscence that narrates previous events and experiences by the virtue of being part of a group they identify by, such as family or society. When someone faces a life-changing event, such as becoming a migrant, scholars argue that people turn to collective memory because it does not merely reflect past experiences, but also has an orientational function to reflect on oneself and find resilience. Collective memory comprises of three dimensions, social memory that relates to people, material memory, which is linked to artifacts, and mental memory, which is cognition. Now, interacting with an artifact can effectively support reminiscence. However, the process of making can be a better approach for that because, as scholars argue, the process of design and creation inherently simulates memories of people, places, relationships, events, activities, and other things, and moves the maker closer to their true self by enabling them to tell something about themselves and their lives through the things they create. This paper makes three contributions. First, it fills in the gap in HCI discourse on immigrants, which emphasizes functionality as we highlight the emotional needs of migrant, which is central for long-term settlement. Second, we do this by advancing research on HCI design with memory by creating an augmenting design tool that supports spatial recall through simple paper sketching and 3D modeling. And lastly, using our tool and study, we offer an original insight into the domestic relations fostered by space configuration, which reflect cultural identities and cohesion of our immigrants. To create an effective tool for reminiscence in connection with placemaking, we developed a tool called our Home Sketcher. There exist several free interactive digital platforms which allow users to design and visualize houses, but we wanted to provide a simple interface that is easy to use, playful, entertaining, and something that supports freedom of expression, so a template that a user can freely reflect on past and current experiences and future aspirations. So based on the use design philosophy and based on my own and my co-author summer design experience, as we both have background in architectural design, we developed our home sketcher, a paper-based kit that guides users to design and sketch houses purely with paper, pencils, stickers, and tangible stencils. Image processing is then used to turn the sketches into 3D models for clear visual representation. The interface for our tool is a 16-page kit that has instructions on how to use the tool and some sample designs plus some very basic stationary utensils such as white paper, construction papers, cutouts, pencils, and so on. To use the tool, you start with a white paper which has a scale grid for reference. You then sketch the outline of the house you want to design in plan view. Then you add stickers of the openings. Each shape defines a type of opening, so a triangle is a door and a rectangle is a window. Take a picture of the sketch and run the picture in a computer program that we developed that identifies colors and shapes to generate a 3D model out of the paper sketch. To test our approach, we recruited 13 immigrants who have been in Canada for 1-3 to three years, almost equal male to female ratio with age range of 18 to 45. Eight of them had higher education. Their occupations are different and all of them came from Eastern cultures. We used the tool we developed as a cultural prop to trigger memory associated with the placemaking through design. Most studies were in groups of two to five people and lasted two to three hours. Our study had two phases. The first part was a user study where our participants used the tool and sketched their dream homes, which were digitally processed to generate the 3D models. During the second phase, 
We interview the participants and ask about their experience in using the tool, the decisions that inform their designs, and their thoughts on 3D models. We collected three types of data, observations of our participants during the design phase, interviews, which we coded based on collective memory, and lastly, participants' final designs, which we analyzed by commenting on designs for contextual insights and understanding the underlying meaning of space distribution. Now we use Howbush Collective Memory to analyze and frame the designs our participants did. First, we establish the social memory in the designs. In all participants' designs, we saw the presence of some culture, values, or representation not present in North America, namely multi-generational house, clear physical divide between what is public, such as a guest room, and what is private, such as the kitchen, and central communal area. For example, a design we see here from a female doctor, where she created a main entrance to the left, which divides the house into first the public sector at the top of the formal living dining area, which has limited access to the rest of the house, and second the private sector to the bottom and right, which has open flow for the family. Something to note here as well is that our female participants provided more details and thoughts of designs because in many Eastern cultures, home design describes a woman's identity as it is an expression of her family status and personal relationships. A house for our participants is not only a dorm, it is also a location for domestic social gathering, exchanging expertise, holding events such as engagement parties, and much more. It is for the whole extended family, neighbors, and close friends. We noticed that there was a strong longing for people who lived back home. They would either refer to their family members' preferences or implement design features that support interactions with these members. Kitchen was emphasized by all of our participants as a place to hold intimate conversations, and the produced kitchen designs focus on making it have lots of natural light and space for family seatings, which apparently is not a common design layout in Eastern countries. Mothers were discussed in all the designs in one way or another. This can be due to the degree of authority mothers have on their children in Eastern culture, where women are still strongly attached to domestic settings. One of our participants explained, Mom, I've missed my mom so bad. I was thinking of her. My father passed away four years ago, and ever since then, my mom and I have become very close. We were having conversations in the kitchen while she was cooking, and I was telling her about my day. I really wanted to have these spaces in my house and invited mom here to share those moments again and again. Second, we linked between the implemented layouts and the materiality of spaces our participants have experienced. First off are the cultural features in their home countries. Several of the produced designs draw from traditional houses from the participants' home countries even though none of our newcomers have lived in such traditional configurations. Namely, first, a courtyard, as seen before, which offers outdoor privacy, or even if it is roofed, it offers a central communal space. Second, separate entrances for the guests and the family household, so there will be two doors. One for the guests that goes into the formal living room, while the other one opens into the kitchen and or family spaces. And lastly, this concept of uncubism, so a house would have multiple edges, which is common in some Eastern cultures, as seen here in a design by a grad student participant. Unfortunately, with mass house production in North America to lower dwelling costs, houses tend to more or less have a box-like shape and look similar to one another. Now our participants consider what they liked and disliked about their previous and current homes. First, they enjoy their previous houses layout, such as the relationship between the living room, bedroom, and bathroom and garden. About half our participants says that their pre-migration home afforded more spaces, but the other half noted that because they had to share bedrooms and bathrooms with other family members, because non-married family adults, and in some cases married adults, had to live in their family home. As such, most of our participants created more bedrooms and bathrooms than what they had originally. Due to space limitations of current places of residence, multifunctionality is a must. For example, the dining table acts as a study desk and a food server. The multi-usage led to our newcomers to feel that they are temporary in this space, hence all the sketch houses have dedicated rooms or spaces for offices and other side chores. And finally, the mental dimension in collective memory reveals the cognitive beliefs and desires of a person when they recall social or material memories. Now, the driving sessions provoked mixed mental states. The first thing we noticed and our participants told us was that the house sketching process was fun and they started telling us and exchanging with other participants in the design group stories about their families back home, domestic practices, future plans, and even their childhood. 
This is because they were designing a house, which is a very familiar object to them as they experience it daily. Moreover, pen, paper, construction papers, and gluing things was something that they have last done during the childhood. In a matter of fact, three kids from our participants' uh, kids liked what their parents were doing and they wanted to use the tool too, so we gave them the chance to try it out. Lastly, the design process offered participants the autonomy to choose what to recall, how past experience can influence the designs, and what value they want to sense again. This aspect of getting control back to their lives, which they lost due to mobility, was a great experience for them. Unfortunately, the design sessions were stressing for our migrants too when they started comparing the designs they created to their realities, which is rooted in the migration experience itself. Some discussions turned into eulogies of past, past events such as continuous mobility, temporality, and loss of home, like what this male participant told us. Honestly, this is very sweet. You know how another participant talked about the story of our home and how we built into a world of ourselves? This is very emotional because we stayed in the house for 10 months and then we left you to work. But yeah, you remember your old house, the kids, the dream house. Many of our participants, especially men, kept referring to the high cost of housing, land, and customization in Canada, and the struggle to find rent due to credit checks, especially for newcomers. Okay, now these findings point us to important HCI implications. HCI research have done work in studying the complex relationship between humans and everyday artifacts, which go beyond function and design. Unfortunately, we do not see similar work done with vulnerable populations or people in distress especially when using props as part of the research methodology. The sketching tool we developed for this study acted as a cultural prop and offered our immigrants the agency to reclaim their relationship with physical spaces that were lost or weakened due to mobility. We recommend that the HCI community consider the post-humanistic relationship that exists with certain artifacts when working with migrants. The sketching process we implemented helped participants to not only draw from the past but also reflect on their present state. In other words, the past and the present exist in one design sheet which is similar to the Buddhist art of conflated narrative. Unlike instance recall through interview or interacting with static prop, paper sketching offers our participants the time to reflect on their current and past lives as they draw, erase, and re-sketch things of what they want or do not want to experience. Hence, future HDI research with migrants should consider the memorial value embodied in the making process. Because obtaining detailed information from immigrants is challenging due to language or privacy, for example, the process of design can be a method for gaining deeper knowledge about them. We were able to dive deeper and get more information because the newcomers were designing something very familiar to them and experienced daily, so they didn't have to overthink. And because by augmenting familiar concepts such as sketching and housing with technologies such as visualization, we successfully provided a middle ground to foster creativity and support fast feedback. In terms of broader lessons for HCI, our study illustrates that standards architecture in North America is far from accommodating the needs of immigrants due to layout design. As Kola Pordurish has argued, our sense of place is generated from within by the virtue of interacting with the physical place around us rather than imposed from outside. Considering there is a lack of research in HCI about how it's designed for immigrants, Researchers can work with architects to design tools that can foster clear communication between the immigrants and the designers, or propose interventions that depend on existing restrictions and take what is existing to its maximum potential. Considering the mass migration that is happening globally, we believe that it is crucial to focus not only on functionality, but also on empowering people through acknowledging their values and experiences, because it is important when it comes to building oneself and well-being. Moreover, if we want to have a pluralistic society, we need to allow people to live with their cultural principles. Hence, more research in HCI should aim to understand newcomers' cultural identity. To conclude, we mended a gap in migration HCI research and studied the cultural identity of immigrants within domestic settings. We did this by developing a paper-based augmenting home drafting tool to investigate the role how sketching can play to narrate memories and foster agency for the newcomers. The tool we developed helped immigrants express what they wanted clearly and freely without the need for extensive verbal communication due to the tool's familiar, simple, and playful interface. Moreover, it helped us dive deeper into their domestic relations without the need for extensive verbal communication. Future work in HCI with immigrants should consider the value of personal identity and memory for migrants in long-term settlement process and aim to design for it.
To this end, and on behalf of my colleagues, we thank you all for listening, and please feel free to email us any inquiry you have about this paper or our work in general.